So Chantel, thank you so much for meeting me today. Thank you for having me. After a little bit of back and forth because of some adverse weather conditions and workflow, we finally get to meet. Yay. Yay. Um, the first question, so the viewers know a little bit about your background, just tell me where are you from and what did you used to do? Uh, born in Australia, uh, grew up sub-Saharan Africa, uh, Germany, Middle East. Moved back to Australia at about 16, finished schooling, did university, got a grown-up job, had a career in corporate governance and risk management. Wow, okay. Um, busy schedules then? Busy schedules, loved it for a long time. Yep. Um, but then decided on a seat change at 47 um, and went into hospitality. That is very much a different change. <laughs> it is a change. Brilliant. Um, so you went into hospitality, but not here in this area in the Leckrim Valley. So my next question would be, what brought you to the Leckrim Valley? Why here? Uh, why here? I, it's a feeling. Um, and I always find it difficult to describe. But uh, the day I drove in, I had goosebumps all over. And I just knew that it was the place. Looking, Driving around the Sierra Nevada, looking out to the mountains... It's, um, it does bring you goosebumps. It gives, it gives me goosebumps every time I explain it. Um, and while I was only meant to be here for five days, huh. I didn't leave. Okay. Um, and from the people that I've since met in the last 12 months here, it seems it's a pretty common story. Definitely. What, um, so now on to this beautiful house that you've done just here. You've taken more than seven months to renovate it. It's absolutely stunning. We will put videos on so that the viewers at home can see. But tell me, what's the concept about the house? What do you intend to do? Okay, so the concept is to be a little bit unique, a little bit different to everything else that's here, mm -hmm. but still draw on the quintessentially Spanish yep. and the Moroccan influence. So obviously the Moorish history of Andalusia is the, the Berbers from Morocco. Yep. Um, and to be fair... For me, it was a close call between moving to Morocco and moving Almost to Spain. It. Right, okay. So going with the Moroccan theme, I think gave, there are a few other Moroccan theme places around, but I think it's in keeping with the, with the area and yeah. the village, but it's a little bit different. It's got some bright colours. Yeah, definitely. It's beautiful. Um, and I wanted to try and be as sustainable as possible in my business. Okay. It's something I've been passionate about for years. You know, the first thing was the solar power on solar power on the property. Yep. Unfortunately, at this point, I still don't have it. Right. It's about an 18,000 euro exercise. It means that I, I, I lose the roof terraces. Oh, okay. As functional living spaces. Yep. Um, so, look, there are still plans to do it later down the track. Um, but the other things I've focused on are the, 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 the sheets or the bed and bath linen or the toiletries because they're quick wins. You know, if you look hard enough, you can find suppliers that do the 100% Egyptian cotton. Yeah. But it's all sustainably sourced. Brilliant. Um, it's, it's, it's small things like the coffee in the kitchen. Yes. Is also sustainably sourced. Um you know, trying to minimise the use of water. Yep. So there is no way I'm sweeping the terraces and the patio every day, but I, uh, sorry, it's washing. Yes. But every but day I'm them. out there sweeping yep. them up, encouraging guests to reuse their towels, to have short showers. Um, but then also on what's out there in the environment that you can use, like, you know, we have wild herbs growing out there. Use them in cooking. Right. Yeah. You know that you can just pick and bring them home, give yep. them a wash instead of buying them at the big grocery market. Exactly. Um, so it's also about education, hopefully, and about making guests feel like, even though they're in this tiny little quintessentially Spanish village. Yep. Like we're still in nature and we're yes. close by and you can integrate it into yeah. your experience here. Yeah. And, and from that, so you've mentioned the sustainability, the use of ecological products, um, and you've said you can source them if you look deep enough, but is it something in this area that you generally find is easy to source or do you have to look a little bit further afield? No, look, sourcing generally I found to be a huge challenge. 
And there's a number of reasons. First and foremost, obviously, language. Not there yet. Yeah. Second of all, it's knowing where to go. Exactly. So, like, I'm now, dare I say, intimately familiar, probably not intimately familiar. <laughs> I'm now very familiar with about eight different ferreterias right. around, around here. But I have to go to a different one depending on what I want. Right, okay. So, you know, when it comes to those types of things, it, it, your network is important. Definitely. So, like, the, the Facebook groups. Helen, who first I uh, lived with when I moved here, yep. out on the campo, finding where to source things is problematic. And I, I find the one area that the valley has huge scope to improve and, and it's showing massive signs of that is the handmade ecological sustainable products. Yep. So, you know, you can go to um, Alcaria de los Santos markets on, on the first Saturday of the month or Oiva on Thursdays. Yep. There's plenty of super talented creative people there definitely is. that are making it but they're not quite there yet in terms of being able to supply I mean I'm not a commercial supply yeah I have six rooms with bathrooms yeah you know so I don't need a lot mm. but obviously I need to have a constant supply yes yeah um so at the moment I'm sourcing it all from um from a, an area in Malaga that supplies mass stuff. Okay. But so you've got the quantity there that you need. For now. Yeah. And then as some of the other people I know that are already making like the most divine handmade products, yep. as soon as they're in a position where they can offer the packaging or yep. we can find a way to package for single use yep. without throwing a plastic container down in the, yep. in the recycling yep. every time, then we can start evolving. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, so, yeah. Brilliant. I'm really grateful that you've took the time today because I know we've had a, a few changes of plans. So I'm grateful that we've had this chat. Um, we will, like I said before, we'll put some videos on the website. And if anybody wants to get in touch, um, they can either message me or they can get in touch with you directly. That's perfect. Thank you Brilliant. so much, Anne. Thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned Bye. for more and we'll be in touch. Bye for now.